All right, turning out to be a busy hour here. Former President Donald Trump, meanwhile, says he will appeal the New York judge's historic $355 million fine against him. But in order to do that, the billionaire will need to post a nearly $400 million bond within the next 30 days. That could mean being forced off uh, to offload some of his most prominent properties. So does Tr Team Trump have a strong case here? We're going to ask Sol Weisenberg, former White, uh, Whitewater Deputy Independent Counsel and a Fox News contributor. So what do you think? Does he have a strong case here? And what does happen next in this time frame? Well, I'll put it to you this way. I, I'm understanding I'm not an expert on New York civil fraud law, but it seems to me there's some real constitutional problems with $355 million judgment when there is no victim, no financial loss of any kind. Uh, I think that is a, a, you have a ripe argument, you have an argument for a substantive due process violation, but the question is, has this been preserved at trial? Uh, that I'm not, I'm not sure of, but it just seems to me to be an outrageous amount given the judge's findings that there's no, there's no victim, no monetary victim here. Um, his team says, Saul, the case, quote, raises serious legal and constitutional questions regarding fraud claims findings without any actual fraud. So there's a lot of discussion about the message this is sort of sending businesses um, in New York or businesses that potentially want to do business in New York. Steve Moore uh, was our guest yesterday. He's an economist, and he weighed in on that discussion over the message this lawsuit sends. Listen. These kind of liberal rulings make it so difficult for people to do business there. Uh, New York needs to restore its greatness, but it's not, it's not on a downward slide. And I don't understand why the governor and why a judge would make this decision at a time when New York has to be attracting businesses back, not, not repelling them. Do you think there's anything to that, Saul? This, this debate seems to be growing right now on those who think this is going to send a message to uh, business owners not to do business here in New York. Well, I think the bigger message is it's going to send a message to certain businesses and business owners if you are uh, a, a radical conservative or if, forget about what your politics are, if you if you end up offending or insulting whatever the current woke orthodoxy is, what will happen to you? Keep in mind, there was no, ju there was no jury here, and the judge crows about this in his opinion, Judge Ingeron. He says, I don't need a jury under, under New York law. But that's based on a 2011 opinion that said you don't need a jury because this is an equitable remedy. That means we're not, and that monetary damages are incidental. But that isn't what happened here. The monetary damages were $355 million. So that stands that law on its head. And I think that they do have, again, a potential constitutional argument here, a very strong one, if they appropriately raised it at trial. So um, this means more than half of Trump's New York City portfolio could be wiped out next month. Um, and that would include two golf resorts, a $248 million uh, uh, tower at the 40 Wall Street building, uh, his penthouse at Trump Tower. Uh, we put some of those up on the screen. This is obviously what's at stake. It appears the ladies at The View are having a field day with this Trump civil ruling. Listen here. Trump is going to use this judgment to say, look, it's a witch hunt. They're trying to bankrupt me. Those other cases are also witch hunts. And to some of the public, that's going to resonate. I do think, and this is not due to any emotion towards Trump, I think the punishment was excessive. This ruling to the number it has been held is slightly playing into the optics that this was political but the, but and the personal. Number was Gee, well, if they've lost the view on the case they're making here with this fine to Trump, I mean, haven't they lost everybody? Excessive, says the ladies at The View. Well, you know, forget about the optics for a minute. Uh, it's, it's the substance of what was done here. And the other argument you mentioned earlier is basically under this special statute, that's been in existence for several years, you don't have to have any of the traditional elements of fraud uh, to bring a fraud case, such as, you know, a victim material reliance. So focus on the substance is what I would say, and it's outrageous. There's no way you can defend this judgment. Wow. Um, really appreciate your analysis on that, Saul, and great to have you on the program today. Thanks for joining us.
Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.